Hello, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council, staff, and members of the public. This is Donna Ventura, Assistant CFO, and I'd like to present to you an overview of proposed changes we are making to the chart of accounts for the new MUNIS ERP system. This is a receive and file presentation, so no action is required from City Council at this time. Uh, we just want to give you an early view of some of the changes that will be taking effect when we go live with MUNIS, which won't happen until July of 2022. So let me first start by explaining a little bit about what a chart of accounts is, and I put some definitions on this slide. Um, chart of accounts is a financial organizational tool that provides a listing of every account in an accounting system. It really serves as the foundation of all of our financial record keeping. And it contains segments and codes to identify and organize that financial information for budgeting, financial reporting, and management purposes. The chart is used to define the who, meaning what fund, what department, what division a transaction is related to, as well as the what, whether it's an asset, liability, revenue, or expense. With the implementation of the new ERP system, we've taken the opportunity to really um, make a major cleanup of our existing chart of accounts. Uh, as you know, we have been using the HTE system for well over 20 years. And over that time, the chart of accounts has really grown very unwieldy um, and inconsistent and redundant in some places where uh, it's been mis misused um, and not, you know, um, not, not, used effectively in some cases. So we've really taken a, a, a major effort to look at that and streamline the whole chart to make our financial processes more efficient. Before I get into more detail about the chart, I just wanna highlight a few of the key um, benefits and features of Munis and really of most modern ERP systems that we will enjoy once we implement this. Um, first, in transparency, you know, across the city, we will have increased visibility and ability to drill down into transactions, um, all the way down to actual supporting source documents for those transactions, all within the system. Today, much of our uh, our transactional documentation is hard copy outside the system and is time consuming uh, to try to, you know, find documents in storage boxes and file cabinets, et cetera. Now all of those documents will be really um, available at the touch of a button in the system. From a reporting standpoint, there's a lot more reporting capability. Um, but one of the nicest features will be for each end user of the system to be able to have a dashboard that is tailored to their needs, that highlights the information that is important to them in a snapshot type of fashion, which they can then drill down to from the dashboard into as much detail as they would like. There will also be greater consistency by standardizing um, you know, the chart of accounts, but, but standardizing our processes more, we will um, ensure that information is reported more consistently across the department. And also, we will be able to route all of our transactions through an electronic approval process, rather than shuffling paper from one department to another to get approvals. This can all be done within the system, and it can be customized based on who needs to approve the transaction based on the 
chartered account segments that are being used for that transaction. So it's very uh, uh, configurable to uh, each transaction. So that will make things a lot more efficient for the city. So now let me just provide a comparison of what our current chart of accounts looks like in HTE to what the new Munich chart of accounts will be. And there are some similarities and there are some differences. Our current structure is broken down into seven segments. The first segment being fund and um, we have currently in our chart 332 funds. Many of these are no longer active. We have about 175 or so that are active funds. So still quite a lot of funds. We have uh, the second segment is the department. Pretty self-explanatory. Unfortunately, though, we have 79 departments in the HTE chart of accounts, and that's, you know, as a result of divisions being named departments, it's a result of reorganizations and the like, so um, a lot of cleanup needed there. And then in the third segment division, we have over 1,700 divisions in our chart of accounts. This is the one segment that is probably the um, most in need of cleanup. Um, divisions over the years have been misused to represent uh, projects, grants, various programs, and not truly organizational units within a department, which is what the division is supposed to be. Uh, so that segment required a lot of work. Then the next three segments, activity, subactivity, element, and object, in combination really represent the account, um, asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense account. Um, just three pieces to that. In our HTE system, we have 1,139 of those accounts. And then the final segment in HTE is the project. And we obviously have thousands of projects and the projects you know, change from year to year. They're the most um, dynamic part of the chart of accounts today. So in the new chart of accounts with Munis, there will be six segments instead of seven, but some of them are very similar. So we will obviously have a fund, that's at least the first segment. However, we are making a substantial reduction in the number of funds in the new chart of account from the 332 or 175 or so active funds to 48 funds. And you know, trying to really um, limit funds to only, only those that are actually required for legal or regulatory or um, generally accepted accounting principles purposes. The second segment is called function, and that was sort of embedded in the activity codes of the old HTE chart, and that is really just um, a code used for our CAFR reporting and how things get categorized for revenue and expense in the CAFR statement of activities. Third segment is department, and that's been cleaned up to just represent the actual departments within the city. We actually have um, 15 departments, and then there's one that represents non-departmental activities. Divisions. Again, also significantly reduced to reflect the actual divisions within each department. So there's a total of 106 divisions currently. And then the fifth segment program, this is a new segment altogether that we don't have today. And it represents a extension of the fund itself. So it's basically like a sub fund or you can think of um, 
you know, fund and program as a parent-child relationship. And one example that I can give you that is the easiest to understand is for our special districts. In our current chart of accounts, each special district is its own fund. And in the new MENA structure, all special districts will be in one fund, but each district will be its own program. And there really isn't much difference between fund and program. Um, you'll still be able to produce all the same information that we produce today for fund as a program, but it really helps organize the information better because it's, uh, you know, it's truly a, um, a group of funds that are a group of programs that are related to one fund. So in the new structure, we have about five funds that we've identified that have these programs associated with them. So when the council goes to uh, approve the budget appropriations for every fund, what will look a little bit different the first time we do a budget in MUNIF is you'll be approving appropriations for 48 funds plus 73 programs. So again, I think of it just as an extension of the fund. And then the sixth segment is the object, and that is um, one segment rather than three, and uh, represents the assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, et cetera. And that is being um, reduced down from over 1,100 to under 500 in the new chart. So reducing, eliminating a lot of redundancy in the account. Now what happens to projects? Project is currently sitting in our general ledger, in the general ledger chart of accounts in HCE, but in Munis, projects will actually reside in a separate module in MUNIS called Project Ledger. And so all of those project codes, and remember those project codes are constantly changing. And the chart of accounts in the general ledger should really be fairly static, but you shouldn't have a lot of changes in the general ledger. It's meant to be higher level summary information. So in MUNIS, all of our projects will be housed in that project ledger, and the project ledger gives us much more flexibility and, and uh, functionality in terms of how we um, manage our projects, the level of detail of information that we report against those projects, et cetera. Those will all sit in that project ledger, and then that information will get summarized and linked to the general ledger at that um, general ledger object summary level. So that's a quick overview. Um, as you can see, you know, we've done a lot of streamlining to try to um, reduce the number of items in each segment of the chart of accounts, which makes things a lot more manageable. It um, reduces the risk of error of people, you know, um, just coding things to the wrong account or segment because it's a lot cleaner and a lot more intuitive in terms of what items you need to use. So here's a, just a, a graphical example of what that full um, chart of account string looks like. It's a lot of numbers, right? We just talked about, you know, there's six segments. So in this example, the first Three digits is the fund. So this is fund 120, which is our special district fund. The second two digits represents the function. In this case, um, special districts are reported as a community development activity in the CAPR. And then the third um, segment, which is the department, uh, our department for public works, which is where special districts uh, roll up into, is department 30. And then we have a four-digit division code. So in this case, 3160 would be the special districts division. And then we have that program. So because special districts fund has programs associated with it, you'll always have this code identified. In this case, 
we're looking at LMD3 for River Ridge as an example, is going to be program 9003. So that would be included in the string. And then the final um, set of numbers here is the object. In this case, it's a, a revenue account for special assessment revenue. So a lot of numbers um, similar to what we have in HTE today, but what Munis provides is a way to give a shortcut to this code, which is called the org code. And so the org code basically just takes all of these digits and con condenses them into a shortcut. So the end users really will no longer have to write out or type out all of these digits. Um, still a lot of numbers that they have to know, but they'll get to know their org codes pretty quickly and then they would just be able to, to provide that shortcut 129003 as the OR code, which basically represents all of these codes up here and then the object, the revenue account. So it makes things a little bit simpler for end users in looking at these um, account codes for the transactions that they're working with. And then the last thing I just wanted to highlight is another benefit in uh, the new MUNA system in how budget verification is performed. So when you're trying to process a transaction um, in HTE currently, HTE will check to see is there available budget for that expense. Um, and if there isn't, you'll get a warning. But the warnings in HTE are really set up as soft warnings today, so people can override them, and then we have to kind of go back and deal with it after the fact. Um, in Unis, you will not be able to override a budget warning. If there is not sufficient budget, the transaction will not be able to be processed. So you'll have to go in and um, make your budget, you know, get your budget uh, adjustments approved, and then you can proceed with your transaction. Um, however, there is this budget roll-up code that Munis has that allows you within an individual division and fund to look at budget in aggregate across a number of accounts. So would not require a change in budget appropriations because it's all within the same fund and the same division. But let's just say that you have, um, you know, several different accounts. You have budget available in one account, but not the other account. And rather than forcing you to do a administrative budget adjustment just to move budget between these two accounts, um, what Units will do is look at the overall budget for that group of accounts. And as long as there's sufficient budget, your transaction can move forward. So the way we are designing this in um, Munis is to group all of our operating and maintenance expense accounts together under a budget roll of code. So that's what this O&M stands for. So for every division and every fund, you'll be a will be assigned a code that represents that budget roll-up code. And for a transaction that um, is being processed in those accounts, the system will look to see whether or not there's budget. So what are the O&M accounts? In this, um, this is a long listing, but it basically represents all of these um, accounts that are what I would call more of the discretionary spend within a division's budget. Things like supplies, equipment, um, professional services, um, you know, things like that, that are, are really um, able to be adjusted within the discretion of the department. Other types of accounts like salaries and benefits, um, your utilities expenses, your fixed charges of indirect costs or um, internal service fund allocations, 
those are not going to be included in the budget roll-up code. So those will all be budget checked at that individual account level. Only those accounts in this operating and maintenance grouping will have that ability to um, really look at budget in totality. Again, within that division and within that um, fund. So this, I think, will um, you know really introduce a big uh, improvement in terms of um, just the administrative burden on having to process a lot of budget adjustments. And it will also, I think, um, improve the accuracy of how things get coded. At least it takes away the incentive for people to potentially uh, miscode their items to an account that has budget available, right? So there's no reason to do that under this, um, you know, setup because we want people, you know, we want to make sure all expenses get coded to the proper account for analysis purposes, and then that will also improve our budgeting uh, accuracy going forward. And so those are the highlights that I just wanted to give you around um, some of the benefits we're going to be seeing from UNIS uh, next year when we implement, um, and, and particularly around how the chart of accounts is going to um, impact the overall um, efficiency and, and processes that we will be performing. I'm not going to go through this, but the slides are available as part of the backup of this agenda item. Um, if you're interested or curious about what some of these codes look like, each of the following slides will identify the various codes like the funds. These are the 48 funds the programs that are associated with those funds that have programs, the function codes for CAFA reporting purposes, the department codes, the division codes, and then for the objects, these are just excerpts um, to give you a glimpse at what the objects look like for assets, which all start with a one, five-digit code, Liabilities all start with a two, revenues start with a four, and expenses start with a five. Again, just excerpts of those codes for your information. And that concludes my presentation, and I will be available to answer any questions you have. Thank you.